Oh, live on YouTube, coffee in the morning. It's, uh, there's no one in here. Again, one of those things we're trying to fix and situate. Let's see if I can get this. Okay, guys, welcome to... <laughs> Hold on one second, you guys. Next time, there we go. Well, maybe we'll do this move. Anyways, I just want to talk today about, uh, just want to talk to you guys a little bit. Here uh, on Tyler Ward TV, just want to spend some time with you guys on a Wednesday. Today is the 17th, January, and I, I don't know if any of you guys have gotten into it, but uh, <laughs> about five, six months ago, I got into this thing uh, called Bitcoin. Yep, and the thing went up and up and up and up and up, and uh, before Christmas, I was like, I'm gonna sell most of my stuff. So I sold most of my stuff, held on to a little bit, and then it kind of blah, 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 blah. And two days ago, I don't know if you saw on my tweet, I let go of, I would say 90% of my position, which was cool, and now the entire market is like 40% below than where it was. So that's really good. I'm just waiting on the sidelines to see if that's even something I'm gonna go back into. Um, it's been a fun little ride. I think it's kind of overtaken my life, which has not been terribly healthy for me because I have music to create. So I'm about to change uh, positions when it comes to just like priorities and shifts and stuff like that. So anyways, if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask questions. Feel free to, to, to share your thoughts on the whole thing, to share your thoughts on basically anything at the moment. But this is Coffee in the Morning and just want to update you on life. Also, wanted to share with you some cool things happening. But until then, let's see what you guys are saying in the comments below, and we can go from there. There are, I'm not getting a lot, I mean, obviously, this is just a just a giant, hello, Carl's Ann. Oh, I could probably look, I'm on my phone right now, so I'm trying to figure out and uh, anticipate this whole thing. Let's see if we can pull up Tyler Ward TV and see. Uh, okay, so what was a green screen or what? Oh, let me see here real quick. Live now. <laughs> there we go. It's literally uh, not a wide, not a wide screen. It's just this kind of screen. It's all good though. Are you going to church? Yes, I am going to church. Um, today, probably not. <laughs> am I in Nashville? Yes, I am in Nashville, enjoying it. It's been an amazing last few uh, months. It's the first time in, in a long time where I've woken up in the same bed. I've been basically just traveling so much. Um, let me just get on the comments here real quick. Traveling so much that for like the last eight years that I haven't really woken up in a place in the last eight years, like consistently for like a month at a time. So I, I was in Denver for like two months. That was amazing. I came to Nashville, been here without traveling. I mean, I had Christmas and all things. So like three weeks, four weeks at a time, solid. And it's just been so good for me to be in one place. I don't think I want to tour as much as I used to. I don't think I want to travel as much as I used to. I just love creating from a place of what I like to call uh, stability. Mm. Stability is good. Anyways, I'm gonna go to the comments here on Coffee in the Morning and see what you guys have here. Okay, good morning, my dude. Evening from Kimmy. Hello, Kimmy. Uh, is this going to be a cover? Is there gonna be a cover with Julia Shear this year? Ah, Julia, um, I invited Julia to my recent party here at my house and she didn't respond, so. I don't know, I'll be down, but I don't know. We'll see, we'll see what happens. What time is it in the US? It is 10.35 a.m. It is. All right, it's like 12.30 a.m. where I am. Oh, dude, Jeffrey, you're in a place of like, you're, you're late, you're hanging out with me and it's late, that's cool. Thank you for hanging out with me. All right, let's see, good to see you again. Official autumn, 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 nice. Um, excuse me, you need to do a tour, I already saved money. Okay, okay, Tonks, I got you. No worries, eventually it'll all make sense. Are you ever coming to Por Portugal? Um, yeah. Eventually, eventually. Coming to Europe anytime soon. Uh, so here's, here's the deal, guys. My whole perception on touring has changed a little bit. I love it, I love coming to see you guys, but at the same time too, only in the right seasons. I don't know, I don't know when that's gonna be. I, I think late summer would be a good time to get out and do it. But until then, I just kind of want to write and create and record and create music from home and be with people I love and the whole thing. So the touring thing is cool on paper. It is cool to be like, yo, I'm traveling the world and get to meet you guys, which is, is, is awesome. But 
it really isn't all it's cracked up to be. Um, I remember early on when I first started doing it, like it's all I wanted to do and I loved it. I was in a van with 13 people, 15 passenger van traveling all over the United States and there's nothing more in my life I'd ever want to do. Um, I think what I did that was a little unhealthy, I hung on to that moment of like, I've got to live this as long as I can. I don't want to grow up. I don't want to be the guy who's like, who stays at home. <laughs> because for some reason, something about that was like not appealing to me. Um, and then the more I traveled, the more I toured, the more I saw the world, the more I understood like, oh. Okay, so like creating a home is really important. Being with people you love is really important. Establishing relationships and having roots is really important. Um, that was also a, it was really cool when I was like super, like younger, like, but I was also running away from like issues that were internal that I've had to like deal with. Okay, anyways, love the new vibes you got going with the original project. Saw some clips on Instagram. Thank you, uh, Dabney, I do appreciate that. Um, but overall, okay, I'm gonna go back. Overall, I wanna see you guys, just gotta be in the right timing. It's all good. Um, can't wait for your originals. What's the uh, double tap about? Oh, I had double tap like Instagram. That song, that song's fun. Um, yep, yeah. okay. Uh, hello, could you please explain your writing process to a fellow songwriter, inspirational and behind the scenes? Yeah, so basically if you're looking to do songwriting, if you're looking to uh, create and you wanna chat with people and you've maybe had a hard time or even an easy time, process is different for everybody and there's no right or wrong way. I feel like some people love, I mean, so I'll just tell you my process. This is just for me. This is not saying one's right or one's wrong. For me, um, I have to be disciplined in my writing. Like, for example, I have to set times up. Otherwise, like, I only write when I'm inspired. And I think half the time, the good stuff comes from when I'm inspired. And half the time, I become inspired because I have, like, a discipline of writing. So, like, I'll do two or three days a week that are, like, scheduled. And even though I'm like, I don't want to do this. But then when I start doing it, I'm like, I'm so glad I did this because this is awesome. Um, and then there's moments where I'm like, I gotta write the song because I just need to write the song. I need to get it out. Um, for me, inspiration comes from real life experiences. I don't think I can talk from anybody else's point of view. It's just my lens, how I see the world. And so I just say what's kind of, what's how I would view the world. And it's funny because most of the time I write from a place where it's been unhealthy. Like instead of like this clear, like this is how things should be. This is where I'm like uh, successful. And I don't know how to explain it, but not successful, but like I see the world now like in a much more healthy, like not out to get, the world's not out to get me kind of way. And so I, I just kind of remember the past experiences of like where I was a lot more protected, a lot more like um, on guard about people, a lot more manipulative as a human being. I just kind of write from those places sometimes because it's easier for me to access that. So I'm starting to access kind of the more, the truthful like, hey, the world's a good place. People are awesome. Um, regardless of like, like you're, you're forgiven, Tyler. Like you're not, you don't have to live in a state of like, uh, you're a horrible person. <laughs> That's a whole other concept, a whole other idea. Anyways, I hope this is making sense. Hey, thank you. Oh, she, oh, Jackie. Yay, you love my hair. Thank you so much. Could you make more songs with the vibe from the Black Beatles cover? Yeah, I love that, man. Um, do you start with writing lyrics or the piano? Okay, so basically, like, as far as tools, um, I start with the beats all the time. I always start with the beats. It's like, I love groove and I love feel, and then the words kind of come on top of that. But that is actually not true. There's sometimes I need to say something so badly, I'll write it out and not even have like a beat for it. So, but most of the time I write to chords, I write lyrics on top of melodies. Um, that's kind of the vibe. So, hello from Singapore, how's it going? Um, don't forget to release How to Lose a Girl. I know, How to Lose a Girl is one of my favorites. I'm excited about that. So, please make a new cover with Cimarelli. Oh, by the way, yes. Lisa and I are talking about that, hopefully within the next couple days or weeks, but we should have a video, ha! Huh! Fingers crossed. I mean, now that she has like management, I have management, they all have to talk about the deal points. Lisa and I just get to stay friends, which is great, but it takes a lot longer to get things done. So as far as like negotiations, as far as like, if the song sells well, who gets what? If the song streams well, who gets what? Like all these components that we used to deal with, which is fine, but it's much easier having someone else deal with it. That's, that's great. So. Uh, any new plugins you like? Oh, plugins, yeah, yeah. Plugins, um, Valhalla Reverb. It's dope, it's, I mean, it's a couple years old, but I like right now. Are you happy with where you are, where you live right now? I'm so happy. I think I'm in the best state of mind I've ever been in, in my entire life. 
So it's like, so it's exciting. Are you gonna start vlogging again? Um, no, I don't think so. <laughs> it's just too much. Like I'd rather, it's, it, I always struggle with this question, like should I live life or should I capture life? And then I go back to the moments like, oh, that was so cool, but I don't remember it. It was like, I remember it through a camera. Um, it took away a lot of just like being and stillness. So um, are you still in church? Yes, I'm still in church. I actually um, have like a Bible study group that I meet tonight and actually I'm looking for a home church right now in, in Nashville, but it is what it is. So my idea of church is probably different than most people. I don't think church belongs in a building. I think church belongs in conversation and studying of this thing right here. So there you go. Are you going to make another cover of Taylor Swift? No, I've done way too many covers of Taylor Swift. <laughs> hey man, you mentioned the house show tour in 2018. That actually justice, my man, how you doing? Um, is a lot of work and I think that would be really, really awesome, especially if I decide like things are gonna be smaller than I anticipated. So that'd be cool. My dad, but at the same time, I don't know, we'll see. Okay. Oh. My dad's been sober almost two years now and you inspired him. Wow, that's very cool. Tell your dad to keep, go keep on going. And also tell your dad too, which is what I learned is I didn't drink anything for a year and, a, year and eight months. And then I became, about, I became the guy who's like, I'm the guy who doesn't drink. And that became like my identity, which was, I had to ask my question, the question why I didn't drink. And the reason I didn't drink uh, was because my whole life, I'd make the worst decisions ever when I was drinking. And I didn't, and it wasn't like an addiction or, or addicted to the alcohol. It was, I was running from feeling. Like I had all these thoughts and all these emotions and all these things I kept suppressed because we didn't talk about when I grew up. My family didn't communicate about these things. I didn't have anybody to share it with. I was too ashamed. I was like, yo, I'm dealing with all this stuff and no, I had no one to talk to about it because I didn't want to be exposed. So I drank and it suppressed it. And then I realized when I would drink, those decisions that I wanted to do would come out and I'd just do whatever and then I had an excuse because I was drinking, you know what I mean? So then I didn't drink for a year and eight months at all and then I realized I'm making really, really wise and good decisions. I wonder if it is even the alcohol. So here's the thing, Over the last, I mean it was like a year and a half ago when I had my first wine and just since then I've just been very responsible with alcohol. Like, like I'll have a wine or two, I'll have a whiskey, but like, I know myself well enough to be like, this is not where I want to live, not where I want to be. So, my heart is like, anyways, congratulations to your pops, that's amazing, and I'm really excited for him, and I think that's really, really special, but also he has to ask the question why he was drinking in the first place, and what he's running from. So, there you go. Um, yeah, and all those people who don't struggle with it, like, no, I don't care, like, if you want to drink, drink. If you're figuring out life, figure out life. Um, I'm not here to tell you like how you should live your life. I just know for me, in my example, in my experience, it kind of wrecked me because I was just running and like I couldn't be honest. So I feel like the, the key is honesty. The key is honesty. So I'm having an exam tomorrow. You should wish me good luck. Good luck, Tonks. Um, are you going to start a tour? Hey, uh, hello from Czech Republic. What up? Are you going to sell merch? Nah, probably not. Too lazy. And he says for a soon to be 18 year old who's about to not be in a rough patch soon, banking and, oh, who's about to be in a rough patch soon. Okay, any advice for an 18 year old who's about to be in a rough patch soon, banking and life in general? From Kitbird. Hey, that's a great question. Um, when I was 18, let me tell you what I was doing when I was 18. <laughs> Bitcoin kills your social life. Thanks, Elise Marie. Yeah, it does. In fact, I sold most of it. I only have 20% of my, earn, my holdings anyway. Anyway, we'll talk about that a little later. To go back to the 18 year old, when I was 18, so I'm a, I'm a serial entrepreneur is what I've decided I am. And some people were like, what do you do with your life? I'm like, I don't know. I've only had one job ever. And it was when I was in 10th grade, I worked at the Holiday Inn and it was hour, 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 get paid by the hour. But they moved me because <laughs> I like to earn tips quicker than most people. So I do really, really, really well and excel in that job. They moved me to a bar runner. I was 16 years old, 16, 15 years old, so it was illegal. I took beer to like people in the bar and you couldn't do that. But you know, they paid me 20% of their tips and I got paid hourly. That was cool, did that for five months. Last job I ever had, ever, ever. Um, and then I worked for myself. So when I was 18, I, I don't know, there's eBay was doing the thing. I had, there was an Abercrombie and Fitch outlet store um, that I could buy $5 t-shirts at and I would sell them to the UK, which is crazy for like 70 euro back then, which is insane. 
So when I was 18, I, was, uh, I ran my own eBay store. Isn't that funny? So for someone who's about to hit, this, this is, so in my brain, I just like to create opportunities and I think there's so much opportunity and we like, we get stuck in these boxes. Like we have to do it. We have to do it a certain way. Our parents did it a certain way. Society tells us to do it a certain way. People are like, if I don't go to school, don't get an education, um, I won't have any sort of like success or any of this stuff. And I, be, and I actually believe in education. I believe in school. I feel like if, if you don't know what you're doing, school is a great option and a great opportunity. But for me, as far as advice for you, as far as banking, I would just do, I mean, practical advice is, this is what I did. Again, this is not for you or anything. This is just what I did is I saved, I lived in places that were cheap. Um, I tried to minimize my rent. I did not overspend. I did not buy things without any money. I never used credit. Um, and I, you know, my parents were super helpful. They allowed me to stay rent free for a season while I was doing my music. So it gave me an opportunity to do what I love, which is awesome. And so that was the most important thing. I feel like if you invest in what you love and what you do as far as you, that's kind of your most valuable asset. Can you believe it? So it's kind of crazy. The more I put time into me as far as understanding who I am and making proper decisions from a place of peace, the more like finances and, and life and decisions just come a lot easier. So I don't know if that makes sense at all. I'm just saying there was not, that was not practical advice at all. That was just me going on a tangent. So anyways, how do you handle the fear of stress on a non-fixed income? Nick, that's great. Um, I think... I don't know, there was this moment too, when I stopped like drinking and things were, there, were, there was a good chunk of change that, that it generated from touring, from selling music. Um, I got with a financial planner, a financial advisor, and I just started like putting, I don't know, I started just making the right decisions as far as investing and financial decisions and the right properties. And it, it just, just really, really was smart about money. Um, I mean, I learned it from people, which is, which is really helpful. But as far as the unfixed income fear, I don't know. Was, There's this faith thing where God was just, God, to me, God, no, 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 was like, yo, I'm going to take care of you every month. All you got to do is do what you love to do and follow me and make the right decision. I was like, okay. And it just happened over and over and over and over again. Like there's the Patreon thing and there's a song that sells and then I get a song that's picked up by a TV show and it's just sometimes it's way more than I need and sometimes it's a little bit and I'm just like, yo, life it happens but God's gonna take care of me. Oh, that's an easy answer. It's much harder to live, so I get it. Anyways, um, is there anything in your life that you would do differently? Justin, yes, I would. I would totally stop lying to people I mean, so I, I have a tendency, I'm a, I was studying the Enneagram, I have a tendency, I'm a three and a two, so I'm a helper and a performer, and my like, go-to sin, I guess you would say, or like, I don't know if the word sin is right, but my deadly sin, I guess you said, is something I fall back to is deceit, so I'll lie to myself and lie to other people, and I won't give them the information, like I'll give it, be honest with them, but I'll hold back a lot of the information, and I used to do that all the time because I wanted people to perceive me a certain way instead of just being me fully. So I guess the thing that I would change, honestly, is just to start being a lot more honest earlier on. And in times of like, those, those times where you're tested, you're like, I should really be honest here, but I'm gonna get away with it, be honest. I guarantee you when you start living that foundational truth, like just honesty, like your life works. Stress isn't a, stress isn't a big deal. Um, and you don't really have to control and manipulate situations. You can just exist and breathe easy. That's what I do. Yep. Okay. Okay, well, here we are. What is something, did someone say something about? Do you still remember your sexual abuse sometimes, Diana? Um, I worked through it. I've gotten a lot of counseling. I did like two and a half years of counseling. And so when I think about it, I see it as an opportunity to get healthy. Um, instead of running from it. Like it happened, I owned it. It was unfair. The dude was unfair, it was unfair to me. Um, but I've been forgiven. Like, I, for now, it's crazy. Everything that's negative that happens to me, like I used to see it as a hindrance and now I just see it as an opportunity to grow. It's insane, like I seriously think bad things that happen to us are the most purposeful moments in our lives. And it sounds so cliche, but it's, 
when you've been through some shit, you're like, I mean, I can get through this, like, and you, and you survive it. It's insane. But there's a healthy way to survive it. It's, it's like thriving versus surviving. Like, you can survive certain things and you can thrive through certain things. And it's like, I've just chosen to be like, that was a great thing that happened because, whew, I don't know. I just, I don't know. I, I'm like healed and I can see life and it's just like less judgment. Like I see people and I can love them and be compassionate towards them instead of be like, wow, you're wrong or this is what I do and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, stop pointing fingers. It's kind of why I'm thankful for it all. So anyways, you guys have really, really incredible, incredible questions, guys. So, um, preach Tyler. Love you, bro. Thanks, Bobby. <laughs> That empathy, yeah, my favorite thing is people. Okay, I'll be honest with you. The, the, the best gift you could ever offer somebody ever, I believe, is a listening ear. So, if someone is coming to you, just listen. Instead of like interject advice, just listen. I think that's the best thing you can do. So, it's been, and that's the empathy bone. Anyways, um, I think this, yeah, so I think this is it, guys. I think this is it. It's been 21 minutes. I love you. Thanks for listening to me rant. I'm on a soapbox. <laughs> and I love you guys. I appreciate you dealing with the sideways, whatever. Um, and I love you. I do. So I guess I'll see you next week. Or should I come back on Friday? What is today? Wednesday? Okay, hit the like. I want to say smash up the like buttons. Hit the like button if you want me to uh, come back on Friday. And say, hey, come back on Friday in the comments, which would be cool. So. Friday, Friday, Friday. Show your body. <laughs> Smash up the like. <laughs> Friday, hey, Friday, Friday, Friday. Friday, 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 Friday. Okay, I might, okay. I'll let you guys know on Twitter. I'll let you guys know on Instagram if I'm coming up on Friday. But love you guys. Appreciate your support. Truly, thanks for being in here with me. And I will see you on Friday. I don't know. Bye.